Hey everybody, this is video six in a video series on game theory. Now, this is part two of game theory in action, when we're putting all the theory that we learned in the first four videos into action. But let me recap those first four videos really quickly. Video one, general principle of game theory, something we have to engage when we're engaged in games or analyzing games. We've got to put ourselves in the shoes of every player in the game and see the world through their perspective, okay? That's the first principle. Video two, we talked about the different elements of the game. What are the different elements? There are players, strategies, and payouts. So that's what we talked about in video two. Video three, we finally got to dominant strategy and how to assess whether or not a player has a dominant strategy or or not. And then video four, we talked about Nash equilibrium and how to determine if an outcome is a Nash equilibrium. And then in video five, we started to put this stuff in action. So video five was in action part one. This is in action in part two. And guys, I'll tell you, this is a good one, okay? We're going to learn some new stuff, okay? Some new strategies that firms or individuals might take. Let me tell you the three we're going to focus on in this particular video. There's the maximum strategy. It's pretty straightforward. They're going to go with the strategy that could possibly give them the best of the best outcome, their maximum outcome. But then there's also maxi min strategy. That's a situation where they're trying to maximize the minimum thing that could happen, okay? Maximize their minimum value. Then there's the mini max strategy. That's a situation where they're trying to minimize the maximum of their opponent. So those are the strategies we're going to talk about in this game, and I'm going to tell you why this game lends itself to talking about these strategies. So here's what we got to do. We got to determine if either player has a dominant strategy. That's always the first thing to do. Because if they do, we can kind of assume they're going to follow the first rule of game theory, which is always play your dominant strategy, right? So let's figure out, does T-Mobile have a dominant strategy? Does Verizon have a dominant strategy? All right, so start with T-Mobile. Do they have a dominant strategy? Now, as I assess this, let me give you that definition one more time. What's a dominant strategy? A dominant strategy is a strategy that yields a superior result regardless of the strategy the other player or players play. Okay, that's what a dominant strategy is. So again, I'm analyzing T-Mobile, so what do I do? I go to a Verizon, and I say, look, if Verizon plays advertise aggressively, what is best for T-Mobile? Is it to advertise aggressively or lower their price? Hey, advertise aggressively, six billion in profits, lower their price, seven billion in profits. Straightforward, guys. They should lower their price if Verizon advertises aggressively. Now, that does not mean that lower price is a dominant strategy for T-Mobile. We've got to now go back to Verizon again and say if Verizon lowers their price, what should T-Mobile do? Should they advertise aggressively, six billion in profits, or should T-Mobile lower their price, four billion in profits, mm, advertise aggressively? Now, what you see is these red checks split from T-Mobile's standpoint, no dominant strategy. So T-Mobile does not have a dominant strategy. Now, let's go and analyze, does Verizon have a dominant strategy, okay? So what do we do? We go to T-Mobile and we say, if T-Mobile advertised aggressively, right? If they played this strategy, this is what comes into play for Verizon. They could lower their price, make 12 billion. They could advertise aggressively, make 10 billion in profits. Well, what's better? Of course, the 12 billion. Again, that does not mean lower price is the dominant strategy for Verizon. We got to again go back to T-Mobile. So we go back to T-Mobile. How does T-Mobile lower their price, right? If they lowered the price, what would be best for Verizon to do? Well, it would be, you see the 14 is bigger than the 11. It would be to advertise aggressively. Check mark. Hmm, quite interesting, right? Look at this. Neither player has a dominant strategy. So, if neither player has a dominant strategy, what should they do? Again, if you've got a dominant strategy, it's in your self-interest to play that dominant strategy. Now, I want to say that every once in a while, maybe you shouldn't play that dominant strategy if you can collude. But if colluding is not an option, you follow rule number one, which is play your dominant strategy. But neither one has one. So what's the next thing? Well, if you don't have a dominant strategy, but the other player has a dominant strategy, you see the world through their eyes, you say, hey, I bet they're going to play their dominant strategy, and then you determine your strategy based on them playing their dominant strategy. But look at this game. Neither one has a dominant strategy. So what do we do now? Well, here's the deal. We could follow the maximum principle. Let's just go with what would give us 
our maximum. Okay, so T-Mobile, just take a look. Six billion, six billion, four billion, seven billion. Well, maximum. So I'm going to put, if we just follow the maximum strategy, T-Mobile would lower price because they could get the best of the best by lowering price. Okay? Again, maximum strategy is you're just trying to get the best of the best. You might not get it, but you're going with a strategy that could give you the maximum of them all. Verizon, 10 billion, 12 billion, 14 billion, 11 billion. Hmm. If they followed the maximum principle, okay, they would advertise aggressively and land in that box right there, and we would get this outcome. So this outcome right here is the outcome we would get if they both followed the maximum strategy. Okay? Now, what else could they do? They could follow the maxi min. Maximize their minimum. Okay? So here we go. T-Mobile. If they wanted to maximize their minimum, well, if they do this, advertise aggressively, six billion, six billion. If they do lower price, seven billion, four billion, hmm. If they want to maximize their minimum, they will advertise aggressively ruling out getting four billion over here. They're either gonna get six or six. This is definitely their maxi min strategy. Okay? Now, if Verizon follows their maxi min strategy, what would they do? Okay? Well let's see, ten and fourteen or twelve and eleven. Well ten's the worst, so if they want to maximize their minimum, they would lower price. So maxi min okay so we got the maxi min maxi min that would put us into that outcome if they both follow their maxi min strategy now there's one other strategy they could consider they could do the mini max okay what's the mini max strategy that's a situation that you want to minimize the maximum of your opponent you want to minimize the maximum of your opponent, okay? So T-Mobile says, okay, I want to minimize the maximum. Again, T-Mobile can do this or this. If they do this one, their opponent's going to get 10 or 12. If they follow this strategy, lowering their price, their opponent's going to get 14 or 11, okay? So what would minimize their maximum? Well, minimizing their maximum, there's, there is the maximum for Verizon. So what would they do? They would do this strategy, this maxi min is consistent with their mini max strategy. Again, that is a strategy where I want to minimize the maximum of my opponent. Now, Verizon, what would they do? Advertise or lower price? Again, if they follow the mini max, I want to minimize the maximum. If they advertise, they look at T-Mobile and they say, oh, six and seven. Okay, if I was to lower my price though, T-Mobile 6 and 4, which one of those strategies is associated with minimizing the maximum that, that, that T-Mobile could get? So that would be Verizon doing lower price. That would minimize the maximum T-Mobile could get. T-Mobile could only get 6 and 4. T-Mobile, we'd rule out them being able to get that 7 billion if we lower our price. So Verizon, mini max. All right. Again, landing us right there on that outcome. So there we go. We've got three strategies we can follow. We can follow just our maximum one. That's really like the most optimistic, right? I'm just going after my maximum. I might not even get it because it depends on, right? We have an interdependent situation. We have game theory. It depends on what that other player does. But if I want to get my best result, I would have to play, again, lower price for T-Mobile and advertise aggressively for Verizon. All right, or we could play those other two strategies, maxi min and mini max. One more time, maxi min, maximize my minimum, mini max, minimize the maximum of my opponent. And again, we land here and here. So, one last thing to do in this video I want to see are these Nash equilibriums. Okay, so let me go to this outcome, right? And I want to see does either, either player have an incentive to change their strategy given the strategy the other player played to get to that outcome? So I go here and I say, okay, given Verizon played lower price, would T Mobile, would they benefit from switching from advertising aggressively? Because remember, I'm looking at this outcome to lowering their price. Would they benefit? The answer is no. Now, let me go back to this outcome again. Again, I'm analyzing an outcome. Would Verizon 
benefit from switching from lower price to advertising aggressively given the fact that T-Mobile played advertise aggressively to get here? 12 to 10, the answer is no, yup, that is a Nash equilibrium. Let me go over here, okay? Again, taking a look at this one, T-Mobile, all right? They played lower price, Verizon played advertise aggressively. Does T-Mobile have an incentive to switch strategies given that Verizon played advertise aggressively to get here? That would take them from seven to six. The answer is uh-uh, nope. Now, given that T-Mobile played lower price, does Verizon have an incentive to switch strategies? 14 to 11? Nope. Guess what? No, no. Another Nash equilibrium. Now, just very quickly, test out this one. If we look at this one, would T-Mobile have an incentive to switch given Verizon played lower price? The answer is yes. That rules out that one. Let's go over to this one. We could do it from either perspective. Let's just do T-Mobile again. Would T-Mobile have an incentive to switch from advertise aggressively to lower price given Verizon played advertise aggressively to get here? The answer is yes, they would. Not a Nash equilibrium. Take a look at that, guys. Now we're kind of seeing some of this stuff really come into play, right? No dominant strategy here. We looked at some other alternative strategies that we can play, and guess what? Those alternative strategies somewhat align with our Nash equilibriums. And what are our Nash equilibriums? Those are places that we can expect, on average, this game to gravitate towards. So we can expect most of the time, guys, we're going to end up either here or here with this particular game. Anyhow, hope you liked that one. That was a lot thrown at you. Maximum, mini-max, maxi-min, pretty cool stuff. See you in the next video.